Hello and welcome to the hearing. I'm John. And from Chicago's North Side, I am Scotto. And without any further ado, on to this week's album, which is from 1998, System of a Down by System of a Down. System of a Down is an American is an Armenian American heavy metal band formed in Glendale, California, in 1994, and best known for their oblique lyrics and difficult to classify music, which has been described as alternative metal, new metal, heavy metal, hard rock, progressive metal, thrash metal, art rock, and avant garde metal. I uh, I work been working out like who best to compare everything to. Mm-hmm. And uh, I came up with it today at the last minute. This answers the question, what would happen if Pantera got Brian Ferry as their lead singer? Okay, interesting. <laughs> I think that's the best way to go if you think of those two things. I, I mean, I get Pantera. I referenced them in my review at one point, but... I don't know who I would pull out for all the insan- all the weird shit. Well, I, I will say, this, in terms of insanity, this does not hold a candle to last week. I mean, Maximum right. were very influenced by System, no right. doubt. Oh, but, yes, very much. But in terms of insanity, that's that's what they bring. You know, System doesn't go that insane. Anyway, System of Down, the album, is the band's debut studio album. It was released on June 30th, 1998 by American Recordings and Columbia Records, produced by Rick Rubin and System of Down, which surprised me. I don't normally like Rick Rubin stuff. And features Serge Tankian on vocals, keyboards, and samples, Darren Malakian on vo- guitar and vocals, Shavo Odajian on bass, and John Dolmayan on drums. Reminder, I don't edit any songs into our reviews for copyright reasons, but down in the description, if you're listening to this on YouTube, or on our blog at johnandscotto.com, you'll find links to System of a Down on Spotify and YouTube, so you can follow along if you'd like. On to track one, Sweet P. S U I T E dash P E E. Love the opening riff. Um, reminds me a bit of yeah. Flight of the Bumblebee. Yes. Um, I I want to just say right off, I don't have a pick for weakest on this album because it's just remarkably consistent. I was having a lot of trouble doing that too. I mean, I got, there were two I could maybe make a case for mm. weakest, but. There's still like something interesting about yeah. them, and it's it's tough. Um, and everything is so short. Everything is about yeah. under three minutes, except for one track. But it goes from that kind of flight of the bumblebee thing to some nice loud metal. And I love how Serge uses his voice um, throughout the album. Um, he on this, he's kind of doing that Jello Fred Schneider speaking singing thing. Yes, they're very heavily influenced by the Dead Kennedys, mm, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Um, Love the death metal vocals in the slow section. Is that Surge? Uh, what the the growls? I think it's Darren. Oh, okay, or I, I think I remember sh- hearing, and it's not listed on the album. I, I think I Shavo. I remember hearing did the, the, the like the death metal shit, but I mean, oh, you're, oh you're right, you're right. I think uh, yeah, because both of them kind of do like some backing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, because because sh- Darren has this Surge kind of too. Darren has this kind of soft, pretty voice. Um, I think yeah, the the, the death. Grunts or, or Shavo. Um, and then it just switches right back to that fast drift at the beginning, just at the right time. Um, you know, the slow section was getting a little tiring, and then it got to the beginning riff again. Enjoyed that. The, the breakdown is kind of surprising because it's not like, you know, it, it's so slow, low and slow, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. <laughs> and then he goes back into his screeching. <laughs> right, right, right. But uh, yeah, just it's hard to explain just what surge does mm. you know just the whole everyone needs a mother <laughs> fuck her <laughs> yeah what he can do with his voice is kind of amazing um yeah incidentally i i saw when i, I was basically looking through youtube trying to figure out how to pronounce the other three's names because surge's name i've heard yeah. plenty of times um and i saw a little mention of an interview front with darren from uh, 2018 Saying that you know he wasn't sure if Serge was he didn't think Serge was going to come back to the band he has obviously since because yeah. Serge was never a fan of metal. <laughs> Serge yeah, isn't really tell into from the heavy solo stuff. album. Yeah, his solo album is just very not metal, which is why he hasn't had a big solo career. Yeah, like if he'd appealed to the system fans yeah. and and done metal albums, 
he probably would have had a great career. But he, he has said that he doesn't want to make any more metal. Um, he's come back for like benefits and such. Um, they haven't recorded yet. Uh, They've Tarzan. been ban battering an album around for probably uh -huh. 10 years now yeah, i think yeah. i i just they just can't agree on anything right right this was in 2018 was that interview where darren said serge doesn't it doesn't want to come back because he's not a metal guy um, he's so. releasing a solo album apparently like mm -hmm. really like within probably by the time this is out yeah i mean i had you, no idea he had something else coming if you're so in a metal band looking forward to that if you're in a metal band and you're not a metal guy you're going to want to do a solo thing to to get your music out there <laughs> to yeah, kind of say what yeah. you want to say on to track two, no. I gotta admit, the opening drums on this one remind me a bit of Guns N' Roses. Um, mm, I believe I the name is. You, I believe the song is "Why Can't You Be Mine." As this opening drum riff that is very similar. Oh right, right. You can't be mine. I remember that. Of course, that was a big single. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, love the streamed vocals in the beginning and the chorus. Um, great groove in the verse. Nice. The verse riff has this nice Middle East, or not Middle Eastern, Eastern European feel. Obviously, be, yeah. you know, nodding to their heritage, they go back to that a lot, which is really nice. Yes, they do. Um, and there's this really nice echo on the vocal in the slow section. Um, right. It's, I, I mean, in, in the middle of this loud ass riff, because yeah. I mean, <laughs> the I can't tell if he's doing trying to do Pantera or Page. Mm -hmm. on, <laughs> on his riff kind of a combination of the yeah. two i think <laughs> on the track but three. the breakdown okay. here is more frantic yeah, yeah. i mean it, it's pretty odd for a breakdown but it's only a breakdown because there's fewer instruments right, right, right. and then you just get the 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 riff to come back and mm -hmm. kind of punch you in the jaw yeah. and uh the on next one's kind of the big single yeah on to track three sugar love the opening riff this is where they reminded me of pantera yeah the beginning of this one and then it suddenly goes kind of loungy <laughs> I, it's the I only way i can describe it that that riff during the chorus is definitely like i mean it's pantera or it's page uh yeah that opening riff oh. is very pantera the heavy part or, or page hamilton you know oh, <laughs> oh, oh page you're on page hamilton okay I was you thinking... know, I saw my notes and I thought Jimmy Page. And I was like, no, 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 wait a minute. I'm trying to tell myself about Page Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned Page. I'm, of course, as a guitar player, as a Gen X guitar player, I think of Jimmy Page. But, you know, Page Hamilton makes more sense. I'm sorry, guys. Five hours sleep. Uh -huh. <laughs> <It> uh, <fat. laughs> but then it goes to that weird double time loungy section. It's the only, again, yeah. the only way I can describe it. Love the guitar tone in that part. Um, it's definitely like a Tom Morello yeah. kind of minimalism where he's playing the DJ, right. you know? Um, and yeah, it's crazy. And then it, they go back to the <laughs> heavy play part. Russian roulette every day, a man sport. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they go back to the heavy part, come back to the lounge section. And in the second verse part of the lounge section, in the second time they got to come back to it, um, Serge has this great kind of screamed rant. <laughs> yes. It feels like almost most of it is uh, uh, just a rant. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted to do a mashup of this and Metric's Raw Sugar, which came out at the same time, which is kind of a jazzy, you know, pop song. Okay. Huh. <laughs> and then it gets into this blasty part where Serge again starts ranting and reminds me a lot of Mike Muir from Suicidal Tendencies. Yeah, that's a good call. The no lights, yeah. no music. <laughs> Uh, just his delivery is so goddamn good. <laughs> mm, yeah, I mean that's the thing. It, there is no system without Surge, right? I mean, all due respect to the suffered, other three, they're good players, but you're here for they Surge. Suffered later on because Dar Darren took over most of the lead vocals, mm. and it was just kind of like, ah, you know, you're not bad, but huh. you're just not Surge. Mm. <laughs> and it's it, it's like. I mean, they're big uh, Kennedys fans. Imagine the dead Kennedys without Joa. Oh God! I mean, they, they've been going around without him, and it's uh -huh. it's dreadful. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> it's I, embarrassing. As a non-singer, I hate to, as a musician who's not a singer. I hate to be that. I hate to say that the singer is the band, but this is definitely a case of that. 
Well, the music that I mean, it's good. It's varied. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're they're using a lot of different tools from the toolbox yeah. instead of just a single color. Right. Although it would probably wear on if you didn't have as good a singer over it. Right. Oh, yeah. Um, and next track is where I started to notice the formula. Um, yeah. On to track four, suggestions. Although the opening caught me off guard. I did not expect an acoustic. <laughs> they go from loud to quiet. Very, I mean. <laughs> I'm a singles person with the system for the most part. I bought toxicity, but it's yeah. been ages since I've listened to it. Um, mostly a singles person. And so I've never heard them use an acoustic before, especially not out in the front. And so Oh, here, not like aerials? Okay, okay. It's been a little long. I think, and the opening riff for um, Shop Suey, I think, has an acoustic on it. But this oh, is. Oh, yeah, you're right, you're right. This is just acoustic, which surprised yeah. the hell out of me. It's just there for the intro and this short bit in the middle. But and I wanted another, I wanted a softer song at this point too. Um, although I say I'm sure it won't last, and <laughs> then there's this real nice timing change where it gets heavy. Um, I saw the t I saw the formula much faster than I did last week, though. It was like track six or seven when I noticed the formula with maximum. Yeah. And they're getting a little repetitive for me at this point. Um, but I did like the high vocal toward the end. I was going to say, they're, they're not even human, the runs he goes on for this. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's just not even human. This one, I think there's like a Bowie influence, too. Mm -hmm. I think especially with his vocals. I just keep thinking of stuff from Man Who Sold the World. He, okay. he sang a lot like this. Mm -hmm. But I, I brought up Brian Ferry, of course, because like if you didn't know Serge, you would think he's some British, you know european yeah. guy right and it's kind of the same thing that brian ferry did too like this euro trash kind of character that okay, he would yeah. sing in mm -hmm. and the, i listened to the album oh man i can't try to remember which roxy music album i put in but it's the one with mother of pearl on it and the first track i think it was like oh, was street uh street life i think it was uh -huh. And uh, and someone's gonna be like, yeah, it wasn't that; it was this. Um, mm. it was, uh, but uh, uh, it's like a mellow system of a down song, <laughs> like the, the first okay. track album, "Street Life." I had it right. Okay, interesting. Huh. On to track five, "Spiders." I think they did. A, this was a single. I think I remember yes, there was. being a video, though I didn't watch it. Um, Love the slow. Right. Can't imagine why. <laughs> love the soft, slow bass riff in the verse. Um, I, it's much quieter than the previous songs, which I enjoyed. I love the dynamics, yeah. and then it starts building. Um, this I think is my favorite vocal on the album. It is, uh, yeah, it's just amazing. I mean, they the band must have been pissed that most of the song gets eclipsed by Serge's vocals, but that's. The nature of the beast when you have surge on vocals right um i think from the story that i understand he was just kind of like a keyboard player that mm -hmm. oh you can sing too kind of thing yeah <laughs> but it was like okay now he's the band mm -hmm. um great harmonies i on... wonder if he could still hit this 23 years later that's a good question i would doubt it um but you know he's moved on <laughs> he's doing other things now that fit his voice if he's uh, i would assume um, I mean, they're still getting together to sing, mm -hmm. to do concerts, yeah, yeah. so that so, they've got to sing this song. I mean, yeah, it's one of well, their big especially songs. if it's a single, yeah, that's true. Um, yeah. Maybe he's rearranged it, but great harmonies on the second verse. And yeah. there's a guitar solo, which happens like three times on the album, but I don't. I think this is the first time I've heard a guitar solo on, on a system song. Yeah, it does not happen very often. <laughs> Uh, it's a bit riffy. I mean, there's a lot of repetition, but it counts as a solo. Like uh, the last single they ever did, um, well, until the these latest ones that mm -hmm. came out, the uh, one loneliest day, lonely mm -hmm. day. There's kind of a solo at the end of that one. But and then I love how the guitar joins the bass riff at the end. It just adds a little bit to it. That that was nice. On to track six, the devil or D devil. I'm not sure how that's pronounced. <laughs> <laughs> it's just d-d-e-v-i-l um great kind of jazzy opening love the riff and the groove love this off-balance vocal flow like yeah 
it's just a little off from the music. I love that. Um, love the call and response between this clean kind of countryish guitar riff and this high vocal. Uh, this gonzo folk metal. Yeah, basically. <laughs> And of course, just, uh, I mean, probably the best drumming on the album, I'd say. Mm. And yeah, something about the production, just it's just so nice and clean. And I mean, I've listened to a lot of Rick Rubin stuff. Mm. So, I mean, he does he does deliver the goods. Well, he knows <laughs> how to produce. He knows how to make a good record. Yeah. I'll give him that. I'm just not typically a fan of the artists he chooses. Yeah, this... Uh, These well, guys in Chili Peppers know. aside. Well, and, Beastie and Boys, Beasties, yeah. Black Crows... Yeah. Um, I'm trying he's, to think of who else he started. He's kind of, and and some people our age will get this. Um, he's kind of the alternative version of Bob Rock. <laughs> uh, Bob Rock he's is not that bad. <laughs> a metal producer who I say metal hard rock rock. Right. He's the guy you go to when you want a hit. Yeah. Okay. There's also uh, Johnny Cash's recordings, you yeah. know. I mean, I mean, love Cash, but but not the Ruben stuff. Um, you know, he's Ruben is a hit maker, and I always have a bias against those kind of producers. He's very good at what he does, but it's just not my thing. I'm trying to think, like hits. Ah, you know, he um, okay. Chili Peppers, give it away was their breakthrough. True. You know, we knew yeah, stuff aside before from the Chili then. Chili Peppers. But... Yeah. I don't I would not blame Rick Rubin for the chili pepper selling out though. Well no. <laughs> There's other issues there. Um, I mean that was all them. Yeah. Um you know, uh, Five Fear at the Party was the breakthrough for um Beastie Boys. And they got way more interesting when they stopped working with Rubin. You know, that's true. I didn't even think of that. You know. They got real interesting after they parted ways with Rubin. Um anyway, on to track seven, Soil. Love the syncopation in the verse. I think the vocal and the band are in two different time signatures. It's brilliant. Um, <laughs> I almost thought he was doing a little edge at the beginning of this, like a <clears throat> rattle and yeah. hum kind of. <laughs> I can hear it. <laughs> at the very beginning. Um, love the guitar riff that comes in after that, like blasty part on the "Don't You Realize" part. Yeah, I've always liked this one a lot. Yeah. Uh, it's great, straight up metal with a lot of clean stops and kicks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and I love how the the follow the riff after that really nicely evolves into the solo, and then there's again another great Eastern European groove toward the end. Um, he goes through like three or four different guitar styles in yeah. this one song alone. Actually, mm -hmm. I mean, he goes to dime bag kind of edge, uh, and of course you got your Armenian folk metal. I have this on a later song, but but Darren reminds me a bit of Townsend, in the sense that. He's a great rhythm player. He writes amazing riffs. So Lowe's kind of eh. Yeah, just a frustrated singer. Oh. Uh, because you know Townsend was always like trying to work his vocals yeah, in. Yeah, right, right. It's like, that's nice, Pete. Yeah, and <laughs> same thing with Darren. Um, <laughs> like you got Roger Daltrey here, who's like one of the greatest of all time. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but Darren, and Townsend has that thing where he writes great songs. He writes great riffs. Can't solo to save his life. Darren, Darren writes great riffs, great music. Um, I mean, I, I mean, his solos are better than Townsend's, but they're still not great. Wow. Um, you know, I like but, the vocals on this, of course. Uh -huh. uh, you know, you peace, you know, my friend. <laughs> just like, what the fuck is he doing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and just to to tie that rant up, I will say, in my opinion, writing great riffs and being a, a great rhythm player is way more important than soloing. So. Ah, you know, you might got a point there. Um, and just yeah. as difficult. So The solo is only one part of the song, yeah. and sometimes it's kind of like as you're listening to a solo and you're kind of like, why is this even fucking here, you know? Mm -hmm. But but a riff is, is essential, you know? And, and you know, as a 35-year guitar player, although I don't play much anymore, um, lead guitarists get a lot of buzz because they're the guys, they're the people who really show off and are up front and everybody notices them. Rhythm guitar is just as difficult, if not more difficult. You know, yeah. you're playing riffs and chords. That's just as challenging. A completely different set of skills, but just as challenging yeah. to nail that down. Anyway, on to track eight, War? With a question mark again. <laughs> Not an Edwin Starr cover, by the way. 
Wow. <laughs> have to pull Good that. Good God, y'all. I have to reference, make that joke every time I can. Um, <laughs> love the opening riff. Um, love the contrast in Serge's voice in in the verse. He kind of does, you know, the, the the two different ends of the spectrum thing. Right. It's probably one of the best anti-war songs mm-hmm. <laughs> done in a long time. Pre-9-11, it all seems so figurative, too. And then three years later, you're like, oof, this is... Uh, this is all too real. And just as I was once again getting a little bored of the formula, they pull out that keyboard and choir section toward the end. Oh, yes. Like, I, did I not wish see it was a Mellotron coming. sounding, but I could. It, it, we'll take what we can get. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> But yeah, everyone is a heathen. Everyone's righteous. The issue <laughs> I've kill. always... The criticism I've always had with System for years is the repetition, particularly on Serge's part. You know, he kind of writes like three different sets of lyrics and just, you know, basically three short poems and just repeats them. Yes. That is song. And it sometimes normally... they're like ten syllable. Yeah. <laughs> right. It. I didn't notice this time. No. It... I, this is a very sim- a much simpler album, and and yep. it's it's very comparable to what we did last week, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why I wanted to, to get these guys in after. Um, but yeah, his repetition, repetitious, 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 yeah, that's the word. Lyrics didn't bug me this time, which was nice. Um, on to track nine, mind, mind. Oh, I almost said mind for some reason. <laughs> this is my favorite. Um, love the opening bass riff. This And this is a minor thing, but I love the sound of the pick on the string. It was just really present. The pick scratching the string. Love that. Um, Darren will do that, yeah. Well, no, it's like the bass. He, he... Oh. It's a bass riff, and you can hear the pick. And it's not a big pitch scr- pick scratch like up the neck like a lot of people do. Just as he's playing, you can hear the sound of the pick scraping on the strings, and it's really present. It's an EQ thing, but it was just a really nice touch. Um, huh. Great groove once again. Because I've heard Darren do that before. Mm-hmm. I, don't think, yeah, I don't think he does it on this one. But... There, there's a this was Shava the bass player but yeah um yeah yeah um great groove once the guitars and drums come in I love how soft this one is this nice sparse guitar part and it oh, starts yeah. and it starts with this nice soft part that fully fades out before it right. gets heavy I enjoyed that you think it's a separate song almost mm-hmm. where that just like oh I guess that was only like a thirty second thing right and then it comes back of course full fist yeah and just gets super loud with a nice slow plodding metal verse um yeah and these demented bends on the guitar during the verse um love those and and then he gets real metally again for what i'm calling the chorus verse and chorus are kind of a pointless thing with with these guys (laughs) he Um, love the contrast in this one um and then some songs they there's a definitive you know verse and a mm-hmm. definitive chorus right. but this one not for this one no, this, no, one no. It, it, this one fades in and out kind yeah. of it's very strange how this one goes almost they probably get the most progish yeah, yeah. of all on this one i think the last track they you know that one section was with the keyboards and, mm-hmm. uh, but this one the whole thing it's also like a six minute thing too just to do that in itself yeah um and I like how that bendy guitar part eventually turns into a siren. <laughs> Just briefly does this like siren thing. It nicely evolves from that riff. Um, and the timing just kind of falls down for a few seconds toward the end. It's not the end of the song. It's just this little bit toward the end before they go back, to, just before they go back to this or into this sort of slow free time thing where the timing just falls apart for a second and comes back. Just a real nice touch of, yeah, we can do that. <laughs> <laughs> and just the very low free thinkers are dangerous mm-hmm. um and then again, oh uh, i think one of my favorite vocals you know we forgot to mention it was back in um in d devil okay. where he does this like in the middle of the vocal he just starts kind of snickering uh-huh. <laughs> like he's doing this ridiculous squawking high-pitched thing and then you <laughs> see him kind of like <laughs> yeah yeah like laughing a little bit and then he gets straight back into the vocals guarantee that was just his earnest reaction and they left it in yeah it worked yeah on to track 10 people love the kind of chaotic sound effects in the beginning now my one criticism of the album 
The opening riff reminds me a bit of Marilyn Manson. I was thinking of Wish You Were Here a little bit for the opening intro with the the sounds well, and no, the things Not, not the sound effects, and... but when, the, when it gets heavy oh. when the guitar comes in. Um, that little heavy section before the verse reminds me a bit of Manson. I'm not a fan, so that's a, that's a ding for me. Um, I'm trying to think. What year is Manson? Before this. Oh, cause... he's probably... Yeah, he was probably the year before this. Yeah, I was going to Rocky when Manson was big, and that was like 95, 96. Rocky Horror. So, yeah. Um, it was, he was a little bit before this. I um, love this kind of circus feel of the verse. I was going to say, the verse, you get the most Armenian of all. Almost a, a polka. Okay, that, that's it. it kinda, I, I interpret it as a circus feel, but yeah, polka is probably closer. Um <laughs> And then a great groove on what I'm calling the pre-chorus, the next section. Um, <laughs> and just it almost sounds like there's a tuba in there, too. Yeah. I don't know what they're playing. Just amazing vocal deliveries throughout the song. Um, there yeah. was a note on Wikipedia about them using unusual instruments, but there wasn't anything credited on this album. So Right. I mean, that does sound like a tuba. Yeah, the yeah. Dump, 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 dump. <laughs> and... I love everything going on in the background during the first part of the solo. Um, this is where I have my note about uh, Darren reminding me of Townsend. So you'd probably pick this for your weakest, wouldn't you? Well, no, it's 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 not as bad as the... I picked the other one because it's the one where I kind of was like, hey, I'm tired of the formula at this point. Um, they got <laughs> me past that. It's just the Manson thing and, and that kind of an iffy solo, but all of his solos are... Eh, so... <laughs> but but like last week i picked the one where i noticed the formula as the weakest because i'm not with particularly with these bands just because i can't think of anyone like system except for maximum um it's kind of its own genre yeah and the bands yeah, like definitely maximum is definitely taking you know picking up where they left off yeah, yeah. sort and, of and taking really and, coming back to this you know, and adding their own flavor to it and take you know adding yeah. to it but but with these bands, and I'm sure there will be other bands in the future who take on this genre, but you don't want to see the formula. The last thing you want to do is see the formula. Ah, you're bound to pick it up sooner or later if mm. you've listened to it enough times. Yeah, I guess. But that's why I picked the other one for the week, is because that's where I saw the formula. Um, on to track 11, Hubert, love the 80s <laughs> reference, with a, all yes. caps except for the RT, which are lowercase. Um Great high uh, opening and, guitar riff. Great. The original spelled with the Q itself. Was it? Yeah. Okay, I forgot that. Um, but love the opening riff, like high opening riff. Um, great contrast when the heavy part comes in. Um, another great contrast with vocals. And this is where I have the notes. System would be nothing with that surge. This is probably the most punk they, they mm -hmm. get on the album. Yeah. I mean, it's under two minutes. It's just like this <laughs> blast away kind of thing. And just, wow. Okay. And he actually references the game. Yes. Because Surge is, like, the rest of the band is about our age, I think. Surge is a little bit older, if I recall correctly. Um, but yeah, he actually referenced yeah. Keyboard. I love that. Um, <laughs> on to track 12, Darts. This one goes very punk. Great punk groove in the beginning. Um, love the vocal in the first verse and then this loud metal chorus. Um, the great riff behind verse two. Love the clock sound effect. That was a nice touch because he references yeah. a clock in the lyrics. Um, and then this little squeaky guitar part just before the last chorus. And yeah, just this uh, about spirituality and, and I mean, uh, he Serge come, comes back to this a lot. I like mm -hmm. how how can it exist in modern life? Can it ex coexist if they can coexist? Right. But uh, the liner notes had, why do old societies hold the pantheon of 12 gods to be true while modern societies generally have one? Mm. I, I, I have a feeling Serge is one of those non-overlapping mode magisteria kind of people where like religion is <laughs> one side and science is on the other side and they kind of try to look at them separately. I don't know. Um because I remember there's one song about like science has failed our world kind oh, of thing. Okay, you never struck me as that type. <laughs> but I mean, lots of people who aren't, aren't anti science have criticized science. It's kind of an important thing to do if you are pro science to That's kind true. of criticize where it goes wrong. Anyway, on to track 13, 
pluck or p.l.u.c.k. Politically <laughs> lying, unholy, cowardly killers. And I'm going with this one for my pick for strongest. Okay. Uh, I almost did sugar, but I was like, mm, this this kind of is the calling card for the entire you know band. Uh-huh. And of course, it's about Turkey and Armenia. Right. Um, love how the build the opening builds and builds up, and then you get it, how it gets heavy when the vocal comes in. This is the one you were comparing directly comparing to a song last week. Yes. Uh, What's up, people? Definitely... The maximum song, and I definitely heard that. Yeah, like he's practically doing a surge impression. Yeah. I thought during it, and, and just the thing that surprised me, um, mm-hmm. how blown away I was last week by them doing ska, uh-huh. not realizing the system was kind of doing a little ska here. Been there a little bit, a few times. Um, but I listened to What's Up, people right after Pluck, and yeah, it's not the vocal delivery. I mean. They do reference Surge a lot, but that those contrasts they add to it with now. But yeah. musically, it's very similar. Um, you know, I was I because I, I always really liked What's Up People, but this is kind of disappointing to see that they really kind of wrecked off their <laughs> um, system like directly with this one. I thought about it. I know it's it it's very derivative. I feel, mm-hmm. but I'm fine with that. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, I think somebody needed to do this. Uh-huh. Somebody needed to pick up where they left off because it's 07. And uh, I mean, yeah. 14 well, years and we still haven't had a system album anyway. Well, I mean, picking up where they left off is great and, and adding your own thing. I love Max, what Maximum does. Very influ- influence, you could argue, derivative. But I'm talking about this song specifically being directly ripped off almost for, for <laughs> lots of people. Um, yeah, yeah. That, 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 I think I put that as my weakest pick yeah, up. Yeah, the that's album. why you picked it. I totally <laughs> get that now. <laughs> yeah. Um, but but love, back to Pluck, I love the smooth but very sudden timing changes. Because they go through some insane timing changes, but it's perfectly yes. smooth. Right. That That's why I did, it didn't jump out at me that they had done the ska, you know, in uh-huh. metal. Because they blend it. Yeah. They make it so it sounds like, you know, it was very unexpected for to hear it in Maximum because, you you know, you're expecting mm-hmm. this straight up metal thing. Right. Whereas here, they work it into the song. Right, <laughs> right. Like, yeah. Okay. Because it's during the verse pretty much. Mm-hmm. Um, they don't have the horns or anything like right. that to go to to jump it out, but yeah. that is a ska beat. That mm-hmm, that true, ver- true. Um, also love the harmonies in the slow section. There aren't a oh, lot yeah. of vocal harmonies on the album, so when they come in, it really kind of sticks out a bit. It's kind of a shame because I feel the the two voices really do go so well yeah, together. Absolutely, I mean it's the highlight of the double album, the hypnotized, mm-hmm. you know, mesmerized albums, is when they do have surge in there. A lot of the times, it is harmony and and it really works for them they kind of go the whole bad religion route in that oh. album yeah okay interesting so i mean obvious question would you recommend it yeah of yeah course. definitely um yeah i absolutely recommend it but again in small doses um i wasn't as worn out after this as i was after buhi Kayas, but i i was still a bit fatigued <laughs> i i think they they've there's more peaks and valleys here so i think mm-hmm. it is kind of something that you can digest easier right. in an album and just sonically there wasn't as much packed into the high frequencies as, as maximum was so that was just a little <laughs> easier on my ears um all right that's it for system of a down until next time it'll be revealing fear of a black planet by public enemy Last now, are we I... doing that next week, or are we, do... are we skipping next, next week? Next week, we're doing Fear of Black Planet. The following week, we're skipping the hearing for an episode of the TV show. All right. Um, so, Fear of Black Planet next week. Interesting story for the last the last time I heard this album, because I was in a tattoo shop. Um, <laughs> until then, of course, always remember, never forget, wherever you go in life, there you are. There you are. There you are.